Okay. Our next topic is probability models. So now we're going to uh, build on what we've learned so far um, to give ourselves our first probability models. And this is going to be, of course, uh, and throughout the entire course, we're going to continue to build on this. Okay. So number one, what is the example? Uh, let's start with an example. And these are examples we saw in the first section. Familiar examples. So we're going to start with the example of dice. Okay. Six sided and for to be to be uh just to be definite about it, we're gonna have one black and one white. So one black die, one white die for two six sided dice. Okay. So the sample space we've already defined in the previous uh in the previous section. Sample space is omega is set of, let's say, B, W, where B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. W is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So those are the possibilities. Black, B standing for black, W standing for white. Okay, and let's let's do some counting. So let's consider the event. So now let's let's consider various events. E, and then let's count the number of number of ways that that event can happen, okay? So the event here is gonna be that the black die is an ace, the ace being the one on the black die, okay? Um, okay. This in mathematical terms is the set of all pairs where B is equal to one and W is arbitrary, right? So the number of ways for this to happen is one, 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 two, up to one, six. There are six ways. Now this number turns out to be the same as the event that the white die is an ace by symmetry because this is the event B1 where now B takes on the values. These are different events. But they have the same number of outcomes. Okay. Now let's consider the event that at least one die is an ace. So now this is a little different, right? So this is the event BW where either B equals one or W equals one, possibly both, right? So how many ways are there for that? Well, it's really, it's everything that's in these first two events here. So it's one, one up to one, six, and then one, one up to six, one, but we already had one, one, so we can skip it. You don't double count. And that's really the trick is to figure out how to avoid double counting. There are 11. So six plus six is 12. 
there's only 11 in this set because the one one appears in both, right? So note that this does not equal six plus six. Okay. And how about no aces? No aces, right? So this is the set BW such that B is not equal to one, W is not equal to one. Well, we how do we count this? Well, one way to count this is to say, well, I already have the, the, the number in which at least one is an ace. And I know there's a total of 36, right? So one way to count this is to say, well, there's all, all total possibilities is 36. 11 are no good because they contain an ace. 25 left. Okay. All right. And let's think of one more, which is that the black, and white show the same. So this is the set BW such that B is equal to W. So of course this is one, one, two, two, up to six, six. There are six of these. Okay, okay. Can we do this a little more systematically? So we don't want to have to write out this entire set every time. So let's think about an n-sided dice just for some additional exercise. So we have two n-sided dice. Okay, so let's suppose n is bigger than or equal to four. And in this case, how big is the sample space? Well, in this case up here, we saw that the sample space was 36, which is a six-sided dice, six-sided die, and six times six is 36. In general, for n-sided dice, two n-sided dice, it's just n squared. And let's consider the event first that the total equals four. Okay. Well, how many ways are there for the total equal to four? Well, it's, it really has to be one plus three, black, white, two plus two or three plus one. There are three possibilities. And the ratio Number of V over number of omega is three over N squared. How about the event that the total on the black die is bigger than the total on the white? Okay. Okay, so how can we think about this? Well, think about it in a square, right? You've got the black, one up through N. You've got the white, one up through N. Okay, and so there are N squared possibilities. The diagonal, we have to remove the diagonal, right? Because the diagonal is not among the cases where B is bigger than W. B is bigger than W where? Down here. Okay. B is bigger than W down here. So how can we count this? Well, one way to count it is to say that what, how many ways are there for me to pick N 
pick the black die, the black die, there are n choices. Okay. And then once I have the first choice, how many ways are there to pick a white die that is different from a black die, from the black die? No matter what I pick, there are n minus one ways to do that. Now, in half of those cases, I'm going to be up here. Right, half of those times where they're unequal, the white will be bigger than the black, and half of the times they'll be big, they'll be uh, the black will be bigger than the white. So they're exactly symmetric. And so this is the number. What is the ratio? Of course, this is this turns out to be n choose two, by the way. Okay, so you can verify that as an exercise. Okay, but this is n times n minus one divided by two divided by n squared. Okay, okay, what is that? Well, the n's cancel and what are you left with? You're left with n minus one divided by two times n. And what's interesting about this is that if we let n, if we let n increase very large, so if we have now a very large n-sided die, two, two, two n-sided die, so where n is a thousand, well, n minus one and n start to be very close together. And so if we take a limit, this converges to one half as n goes to infinity. Just something to to think about, which is just really saying, as n goes to infinity, the probability of lying somewhere on this diagonal is negligibly small. So you're very unlikely to have two die, e to the, the two dice equal to each other, if there's a lot of different possibilities, which intuitively makes sense. Okay, so that's these are examples of probability models. These ratios are going to be our first definitions of probabilities. Probabilities are not always specifically ratios of counts, but that's our first, our first probability models are going to assume that, okay? And in order to work with these types of models, we have to work a lot with set theory, okay? Some basic concepts in that set theory, we can define these types of events that we've described up here, and we can count them efficiently with some uh, general terminology and concepts from set theory. And so we're gonna lay that down um, next with the core language and core concepts. And then we're gonna start with the first general class of probability models, which are essentially uniform probability models where we assign equal probability to every possible outcome. And we can see how far we'll get at that point.